ocean, you ask. A very large expanse of sea. What are some examples of what's in an ocean? A shark. A sea otter. An eel. Plankton. Sea urchin. Sea lion. Everything that's in an ocean. That's, that's some, some things examples. That, that are some things that are in an ocean. River. Large natural stream of water flowing channel to the sea. A lake or other stream. Stream. A small, narrow river. Okay. Some things you may ask that are in it. Insect larvae. Trout. Planktons. Frog. And those are just some examples. Pond. A small body of still water formed naturally or by or or hollowing embanking. or embanking. Lake. A large body of water surrounded by land. What's in it, you may ask? Frogs. Water boatman. Catfish. Water fleas. Algae. Mosquito larvae. Rotifers. Hello there and welcome to Life TV! Where we talk about creatures and how they live. Today we have two very special guests. Willy the Whale and Stan the Starfish. So let's cut to the chase and get some questions asked. Willy, being an aquatic mammal, do you ever wish you had gills like a fish? It does get a little annoying sometimes. But... I can hold my breath for a really long time. It looks so majestic when I swim to the surface and fill my lungs with oxygen. <laughs> I bet you could win a contest with me at holding your breath. <laughs> yeah, probably. Now Stan, how do you survive living in the seashore where the water is constantly moving? Well, I have adapted quite well. Some aquatic animals burrow in the sand and mud, just like a clam. But I have these awesome special appendages. Deep fear. Well, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. <laughs> it's maybe rooted in the soil in the bottom of a <laughs> pond or at the edge of a lake. Seaweeds are simply attached to the bottom. Plants in very shallow water often have roots just like plants, which they will use to anchor themselves and to gather nutrients from the soil. And too much water can be a problem for aquatic plants. The plants need a way to get oxygen into their waterlogged roots. To do this, many aquatic plants, including the water lily, have long open channels in their spongy stems to carry air to get <laughs> underwater roots. Stomata are tiny holes on leaves where water and air can pass in and out. While most plants have stomata on the underside of the leaves, aquatic plants have stomata on the top of their leaves. These stomata enable their floating leaves to get more air. The surface waters of lakes and oceans are full of tiny plants called phytoplankton. The majority of these plants range from in size from 0.002 to 2 millimeters. Nearly all marine life depends on these tiny plants. In fact, much of life on Earth depends on phytoplankton, since, like other plants, they produce oxygen that all animals need to survive. Phytoplankton needs light to grow and photosynthesize. Thus, it is vital that they remain in the upper surface waters, where sunlight can penetrate for as long as possible. As well, they are made out of glass-like substances called silica. Which keeps them going. Nutrients and water. All aquatic plants need nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates to survive. Where do these nutrients come from? Originally, nutrients are washed into the water from the land. They also come from detritus and decaying bodies of dead plants and animals. At certain times of the year, nutrients are very abundant. In the spring, for example, when the snow starts to melt high in mountains, more water enters the stream and rivers and carries nutrients through to the lake and eventually to the ocean. In the water, in water, as on land, the springtime is of abundant plant growth because of the increase in sunlight nutrients. 
At other times, however, nutrients are scarce in aquatic environments. In late summer, for example, aquatic plants have used up most of the available nutrients in the water. Nutrients can be replaced throughout mixing of water due to the action of wind, waves, and currents. Some currents cycle nutrients from the oceans or lake bottom of the surface. These areas are usually rich in aquatic life. Temperature mixing. In the fall, when air temperatures begin to cool, the surface temperature of water also begins to cool. The density of the surface layer increases and the surface water mixes with water deeper in the ocean and lake. When this happens, nutrients are often brought up to the surface and this can result in an increase in phytoplankton in the fall. Cold water holds dissolved gases better. When the thermocline breaks down and water mixes in the fall, oxygen levels increase in, sur in surface waters. Squid! Harlequin duck! Toothed whale! Fishing can affect the balance of fish population in lakes as well. In the Great Lakes, for example, the abundance and mix of fish population have been altered over the past century. This change has been caused by fishing introduction of new species by people and population. Commercial fisheries tend to capture species of, of larger fish and fish with higher market price. As the population of these fish declines smaller, less, less commercial fi <laughs> fish species may increase th in numbers. In this way, fisheries alter food chains. Competition among <laughs> species and use, of, and use of habitat. The total abundance of fish in the aquatic habitat may be similar, but the types of and sizes of fish may be very different.